I'm Dr. Russell Blaylock. Uh, I'm a board certified neurosurgeon. I've retired from active practice. Now I do primarily uh, theoretical research in neurosciences uh, and uh, spend most of my time writing uh, research articles, review articles on neuroscience projects uh, at the present time. Uh, we look at the original justification for fluoridating water back in 1945. Uh, when they picked a couple of cities, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Muskegon. Uh, Grand Rapids was going to be fluoridated, uh, Muskegon was not, and they were going to compare and use the idea that fluoride was preventing cavities. Uh, so th even before the study had been completed, uh, they announced that it was a grand success and that fluoridated water produced a uh, 30 to 60 percent reduction in cavities. What they didn't say was that in the unfluoridated city, there was a, uh, a very similar drop in the incidence of cavities as well. And in fact, throughout the entire world, we began to see in the developed world a tremendous fall in the incidence of uh, dental cavities. Uh, that had nothing to do with fluoride. What it had to do with was the increased intake of calcium, mainly through cheese consumption, and better diets, better oral hygiene. Uh, and a number of studies proved that, one of which was uh, conducted by the uh, U.S. Public Health Service. It was one of the largest American studies at the time. They looked at 39,000 school children in which they looked at the effect of fluoridation versus non-fluoridation, and they found it had no beneficial effect at all. Well, they hid that document uh, so scientists couldn't examine it, and the public and the media uh, would never see it. Uh, well, a Dr. Yamanyanis, uh, who was a chemist, uh, filed a Freedom of Information uh, lawsuit, had it released, and then he saw why they wanted to hide it, and that's because uh, it clearly demonstrated fluoride uh, did not reduce cavities. Uh, since that time, there's been a number of studies, one of which included eight countries, uh, another which included all studies on fluoride, independent studies on fluoride and dental caries, uh, for the past 30 years. Another study included 400,000 children in India. Uh, all of these studies showed the same thing. Adding fluoride to water did not reduce cavities at all. And in fact, several of the studies that showed it increased cavities. And it did so because it weakened uh, uh, the dental layer of the tooth and made it more prone to, uh, to become cavities. Uh, so now that we've established, and it's admitted by the National Science Foundation study, which was recently completed, that fluoridating water does not reduce cavities. Uh, there's no modern evidence whatsoever that fluoridating water reduces cavities at all. So you have to ask the question, well, why are you still fluoridating water? Uh, now, European countries have caught on very quickly. None of them fluoridate their water. Uh, Britain. Uh, fluoridates about 60 percent of its water and it forced fluoridation on Ireland. Uh, but the mainland European countries do not fluoridate water, do not allow it. Uh, but the United States, we still have the federal government and uh, in collusion with the American Dental Association going to various cities, even small cities, uh, using their pressure, their money, taxpayer money, to try to force uh, local city councils uh, to uh, fluoridate the, the water. In the state of California, uh, in fact, they've ordered the fluoridation of all waters uh, in every city and village, uh, over 10,000 inhabitants, uh, whether they vote to not fluoridate their water uh, or not. Uh, so you, you have to ask the question, well, now that scientifically we've proven that fluoridating water has no effect on reducing cavities, why is the federal government spending so much money and effort to force fluoridation of the rest of the water supply? And even insisting that bottled water be fluoridated, that no one would have access to unfluoridated water uh, except the elite. Well, if we look at uh, the scientific studies on what is the effect of fluoridation, well, we know fluoridating water uh, through a number of studies, some of which were ordered by the federal government itself in the earlier days, increases cancer risk. Uh, uh, 
uh, Burke and Yaman Giannis, two scientists, did one of the largest cancer studies in relationship to fluoridating water supply. They looked at all cities, uh, 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 10 cities in the eastern part of the United States. And they showed that in fluoridated cities, as compared to unfluoridated, there was a 10% increase in cancer. Uh, this was a criticized study, so they repeated it, and they did all cities east of the Mississippi, uh, above 10,000 population, comparing fluoridated and unfluoridated. Now, what they did, they compared the cancer statistics before fluoridation and then uh, 13 to 17 years after fluoridation. Again, they found there was a 10% increase uh, cancer death incidence in the cities that had been fluoridated. Now, when you say cancer death, and that means people who died of cancer, you can uh, uh, appreciate there can be a lot more people who develop cancer who didn't die. So the actual cancer incidence is much higher. Uh, this study was so impressive to some members of Congress they ordered a study of this link to cancer through the Battelle Research Institute. These studies showed that, number one, it produced a number of types of cancer, uh, one which was a very rare liver cancer, and uh, it significantly increased the growth of cancer in people who already had cancers. Well, despite these studies, they're still fluoridating water. They found out it increased fractures not only in the elderly, but in younger women. Uh, and it increased hip fractures in older men to a greater extent than the women. Well, a hip fracture in someone over 65 has a high mortality rate. So it's a good way, uh, if you wanted to, to increase the mortality of the elderly and get them out of the way, which is in discussion today. Uh, we know that it has profound effects on the brain. Uh, one of the most uh, impressive was done by Dr. Uh, Phyllis Mullenix, who was a highly regarded neurotoxicologist, someone who studies the toxicity of different elements on the brain. Well, she was uh, uh, drafted into doing this when she worked uh, for the Forsyth Dental Research Institute, and she, she had never worked with fluoride, didn't know a lot about it. Now, I know this firsthand because I've interviewed her and talked with her, and I, I know her. Uh, and she said uh, she, when she first was going to do the research product to see if fluoridating water had any effect on the brain's function, she thought uh, it would be negative. She didn't think fluoride would have any uh, adverse effects on the brain. She uh, did one of the largest studies that's been done uh, in animals to see the effect of fluoridating water on their brain function. And she used a very innovative modern technique. And in this technique, she used computers to see the behavior of the animal so that it was totally objective. There was no subjective influence by the researcher themselves. That had never been done before. And all this was high-tech equipment. Uh, she completed her study. And to her surprise, the fluoride produced two main effects. If you fed the fluoride to a pregnant animal, the offspring then became hyperactive, in other words, like ADHD. If you gave the fluoride uh, after birth, the animal became very lethargic, sort of like a couch potato, didn't really want to do anything, became very apathetic acting. Uh, so this was a very clear effect with objective, computerized evaluation of the behavior of these animals. She used over 500 animals. Uh, she completed this research, and she also measured the fluoride levels in the animal's brain and found some very interesting things. It's that fluoride tends to accumulate in the part of the brain that controls behavior, particularly the, the uh, hippocampus and the other limbic areas of the brain. She brought this uh, <clears throat> research to the National Institutes of Health. <clears throat> they asked her to present this and the results of her research. Well, at the same time, after she wrote up her research, she had presented it in one of the very prestigious journals to be published, and uh, they didn't know it. So she presented it to the National Institute of Health, and their response was very cold. And she said when she was walking through the National Institutes of Health, all the walls were adorned with big posters uh, uh, proclaiming the effectiveness of fluoridation of water and promoting the fluoridation of water. And she said, this isn't very objective audience I'm speaking to. 
uh, well, they were very hostile and very cold to her during her uh, presentation and didn't even ask questions. 